What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 177 of the Rise to Glory here at Gibraltar Apex and today it's a rematch. This is a fixture that we played a year ago. It's against Manchester United. It's the quarterfinals. Uh, I believe the twist and the thing that makes this game against United slightly different is the fact the first leg is at home. As you can see, we have them home and away over the next week. If we look at last season where, of course, we crumbled against Manchester United, you can see here... Uh, it's cut off, isn't it? Of course it's cut off. Um, but we, um, we won the first leg and lost the second leg. Actually, now I remember it was at home, that first leg. And, uh, yeah, you can see here we won 2-1. We then went on to lose 5-2 at Old Trafford after extra time. Something we definitely want to avoid today. Anyway, since the last episode, just a few games to let you guys know about. And uh, if we take a look at them, uh, you can see here that we won in the Rock Cup against Cannons 3-0. And we followed that with an 8-0 win against St. Joseph's with Mosca grabbing 5. So that was a pretty good result. And hopefully, you know, we can continue on from where we left off really against Juventus at home. Where we beat them 5-0 and absolutely stuffed Manchester United. It's worth noting that they are the big dogs. They won the Champions League last year, so they're going to be a tricky team to take on. The other teams left in the competition, well, you can see here we've got Inter Milan v PSG, Real Madrid v Bayern Munich, and a, a Portuguese kind of face-off, I guess, as Benfica take on Porto. Now, you may have noticed the title of this video, assuming I remember what I want to title this video, and gone, what? That That's probably the, the reaction I hope people are having to the title, which is going to be along the lines of the world's most expensive transfer because people in the YouTube comment section have been calling me Venga. For the last year, I've been called Venga. If we just look at my transfer history, Venga. He's, he's made £60 million profit and he's not spent any money. He's turning into arse and he's been at the club too long. I, I took this quite personally and obviously if we look at our bank balance, we have £211 million. It's quite a lot of money. So I went and spent it. And who did I spend it on, you ask? Well... I decided to bring in a player who I talked a little bit about, I believe, in a fairly recent episode, who I'm probably not going to be able to find now uh, through the news line, but we'll have a look at him anyway. It's Lawal. Now, if you don't know about this guy, he's Nigerian. He is Real Madrid's assistant captain, kind of vice captain. He's an incredible centre midfielder, and I've bought him. And you're probably sat going, Jack, how much have you bought him for? Well, he had a release clause of £130 million. Which I wasn't too keen on. So I managed to negotiate a deal where we pay £40 million this summer. And he'll join us this summer. And then we pay £80 million over the next four years. So it's £20 million of our transfer budget for the next four years will be going to Real Madrid. And uh, am I happy with the transfer? Yes. He's one of the world's best players. As you can see, world-class midfielder. He's an absolutely amazing centre mid. His mentals, his physicals, they're all really good. Um, he fitted into my plan really perfectly because with Paul Smith ageing a little bit, he's going to be a fantastic player if he do need a left attacking mid. But obviously with us growing more and more dependent on our narrower 4-3-1-2 system, he's very, very capable of slotting into a centre mid or centre attacking mid position. Well, you can see looking at him, he can put in the tackle, he can mark. His mentals are really stand out. Great vision, great passing, his technique's amazing too. And I'm really excited to see what he can do. Uh, if we look at his history, you can see he's been a very good player for Real Madrid. Last four years, averaged above a 7.5 average rating, which is a really great achievement, uh, obviously, for a player playing at Real Madrid. If we look at his scout report here, you can see his pros. He's a world-class player, driven in pursuit of his goals. He fits in with our kind of whole team. Two of the big things really that stood out for me were the fact that he's a very consistent performer, very consistent, and obviously if you don't know about consistency, that is how likely a player is to perform to their attributes. So if a player is very consistent and has it in big green letters, it's usually a good sign. And the other thing that really stood out to me was the fact he enjoys big matches too. You'll notice his adaptability is a little bit dodgy. It says he's susceptible to problems when living in another country. However, he has a full understanding of English and is fluent in English. And so I'm hoping that isn't going to be too much of a problem, to be honest, and he won't have too much in the way of problems settling in. He is playing for Nigeria, which does mean we might have the African Cup of Nations to contend with in January, but that's only ever going to affect league games. And I am really, really excited to see what this guy can do for us. 
But anyway, of course, he's not going to be coming to the end of the season, so we have to make do with what we have now. And uh, we are going to, of course, be taking on Manchester United today. Looking at our team, this is the squad we are going to go with. Uh, it's a little bit of a, a change-up in midfield. It's kind of been a weird situation this year. I'm not really settled on my centre-mid setup, really. A little bit young, of course, starting at goal. Uh, Left-back Cabasele comes back in, of course. He was suspended for the second leg against Juventus. Good to have him back in the side. Guy Ganov, who got a key assist last game at right-back, of course, the 29-year-old now. He's getting on a little bit, but he's still an absolutely class right midfielder for us. In the centre of defence, we, of course, have Ramadan Mustafa, the towering Egyptian, and alongside him, Jorge Assad. Uh, who is doing very, very well, continuing to play for Argentina. Declined a little bit of late, but he's still such a great centre-back for us. And I, I really like the kind of a sad Mustafa partnership. I think it works quite well. Anyway, moving on into the midfield, Mini Mosca retains his position at kind of centre mid on defend. He's not the greatest centre defensive mid, but he always does a really good job for us. And you can see in the Champions League, he has a 7.37 average rating, which is really good for a player who isn't really doing a lot in the attacking sense and his role is very much limited to kind of his defensive capabilities. Anyway, in the box-to-box -box midfielder, we're actually going to go with this guy. Um, of course, it's Junior. He's a, a good centre mid. He's had a few injuries this year. Obviously, originally kind of joined the club uh, to be a winger for us. He's kind of adapted into this narrower role uh, when we've needed him to. As you can see, he's very versatile as a centre mid, uh, and hopefully he can give a good performance today. In the playmaker role, out on the right-hand side, we've got Volski playing, of course, the Polish player, a player who might find his position in the kind of starting lineup in jeopardy with Loral joining us soon. At centre-attacking mid, we, of course, have Gilvan, the Brazilian, can play this role amazingly. I'm hoping he's really going to step up to the plate again today. And up top for today's game, we, of course, go with Sebastian. Bastian Girard, the Belgium, and uh, alongside him we go with Mosca at the number 9 shirt on his back. Hopefully he can give a good goal-scoring performance today. So anyway, let's submit our team for today's game. Of course, Girard, he got four last time out. We're taking on Real Madrid, uh, not Real Madrid, that's the player <laughs> where we've signed Loal on. We're taking on Manchester United. It's a game that we played, as I said, last year. We won this tie 2-1 last year in the home first leg. As we learnt then, that wasn't really enough going to Old Trafford. And I'm hoping that today we can really kind of do a similar performance to how we performed against Juventus and just absolutely demolish them at home. We have the quality to do that, I believe. I think we have the goal-scoring capabilities to be really clinical in front of goal. And, uh, well, perhaps we displayed a lack of that in some regards against Juventus because we did have a lot of chances last game that we didn't take. I'm hoping that we can take the fewer chances, which I imagine we are going to have today. Great interception by Mustafa there. Girard collects it to Mosca. Men surging forward. Gaiganov on the overlap. Can he whip the ball in? He can. Gilvan back post. The Brazilian scores. Three minutes gone. Gilvan with his fourth goal of the season. A man who loves to score a screamer. That's pretty much anything but a screamer. It's a tap-in. Uh, but it's a great ball in by Gaiganov, the Ukrainian. Picks out his man. Gilvan playing that centre attacking mid roll surges on ahead, takes upon that attacking duty. Uh, well, as you saw there, he slots it home to make it 1 0 here against Manchester United. The dream start to the game. Hopefully, we can now use that as a platform to build off as this game progresses. No immediate reply by Manchester United, which is good. But looking at the game as a whole, they are having more possession and more shots. But we are on the attack again. Moscow, options in the middle. Gaiganov crosses it. Cavaselli at the back post was lurking. United may be going to look for some kind of counter, although Gaiganov composed, wins the ball. Gilvan, Mosca, can he bury it? Of course he can. It's 2-0. The dream start. 20 minutes gone. We're 2-0 up. United have been very good so far this game, but we've taken two chances that fell our way. Gilvan with a lovely little pass through. Mosca lets the ball run, takes it in his stride. First touch, slots it in. Gilvan with a goal and an assist to his name, doing a great job in that centre attack in mid roll. And well, I said I wanted us to kind of pick up from where we left off against Juventus. So far, so good. United, they're very much in this game, though. We can't get too carried away. As I said last time we played United here, we did get two goals at home in a 2 1 win. We want to build off this if we can, and we can. No sad scores, too. It's 3 0. What is happening? What is actually happening? We are demolishing Manchester United at home. Junior with the ball in, a ball of quality, and Jorge Assad just leaps like a gazelle in the six-yard box as well. Keeper perhaps could have come for it, but it was very well flighted the ball. And well, we're three goals up after 30 minutes. Now we need to look to defend, and Gaiganov wins it. Mosca's marauding on ahead. He's got men with him. This is so confident from us. Girard, in fact, Gilvan. Girard's there, though. He makes it 4-0. It's Gibraltar Apex 4, Manchester United nil and it's 30 minutes into the first leg we've had four shots on target we've had four goals 
There's a game many years ago, and someone could probably dig out for me because I won't remember, but it was a Champions League qualifying game. And I think we had five chances in the first half and scored all five. I'm getting flashbacks to that. That was probably, what, 18 years ago at least. What a clinical display in this first half. We've not had a ton of chances. One clear cut, one half chance, but we're 4-0 up. And we're on the attack again. Girard trying to switch it to Gaiganov. Is red quite nicely there. Manchester United coming forward. Obviously, they're going to be looking to try and get something. Here. Away goals could be useful. It's actually Kyle Guy in the centre who gets the goal for them. Makes it 4-1 before half-time. Perhaps takes a little bit of a shine off that first half performance. Bulldog down the left-hand side. Whipped in. I don't know if Ludwig Young could have come for that, but Guy slotted it away regardless. 4-1 here. Still looking fairly comfortable at half-time. I can't really fault the players too much, even though we did concede that late goal. Both our fullbacks on bookings is a little bit concerning, perhaps. We've got some options, though, on the bench, so he can kind of mix it up. I believe Villalba should be there. It'll be him or Gonzalez who is there. It is Villalba. I could bring him on for Cabaselli, and I may well do that move. Cabaselli showing a little bit of a lack of discipline recently in the Champions League, of course, was suspended for the second leg against Juventus. We don't really want to go down to 10 men, even in a game where we do have this nice, quite comfortable, really, free goal cushion. Mosca also getting a book in mini Mosca, that is. Um, but no, 16 minutes gone. It's been a, a, tamer, a, a tamer second half, certainly, compared to the first. But um, that kind of suits us, really. You know, 4-1. Keep it like this. I'll be very happy. Look at the stats. It's been a pretty tight game. United not had quite so many kind of half chances as us. It's just been a real clinical display by us here. Uh, looking at our team, Mosca not having the greatest game. Mini Mosca on a booking. I'm going to take him off for Thiago. I'm also going to take off Cabaselle for Villalba. It's worth noting, Cabaselle's fitness just wavering a little bit. 68% condition, starting to dip below perhaps the area where I feel comfortable with a player's condition. So we'll take him off there. And, uh, well, 14 minutes left. I'm happy just to see out a 4-1 here. That's pretty much what I would have dreamt of in an ideal scenario, really. And, uh, well, it looks like that is going to be the result we get. Nothing happening in the second half, really. Um... A bit, a little bit disappointing, perhaps, from the, the neutral perspective, you want to be entertained. Although Guy has a chance, I take it back, there is a goal. It could prove to be crucial. Manchester United grab a second away goal. Kyle Guy with it. And, well, 4-1 is great. 4-2, it leaves you a little bit less comfortable, perhaps, the fact you're conceding two away goals. That said, a two-goal cushion is still a good result, really, against Manchester United. 2-1, we beat them last year. That wasn't enough. 4-2 here... Twice as many goals. Is that going to be enough? You certainly hope so. Um, but no, that looks like it's going to be all she wrote for this game. 4-2 it finishes at the Space Park here. The next game is only in a week's time. So I guess we're going to get straight into that. We have got a game against Lincoln in between. You guys don't want to see that. We want to see how this game kind of concludes. We are, of course, taking on the holders. But a 4-2 result, a great result really to take from the first leg. And uh, yeah, let's hope we can build off that. Okay, guys, so we are back here for the second leg against Manchester United. Obviously, a great result in the first leg. Hopefully, we can kind of build off that. Uh, just the one game to tell you guys about in between. We beat Lincoln Red Imps 4-1. A good little result, really. And, uh, yeah, going into this United game, we've got a little bit to play for. Just a little bit of transfer news. Something that might happen, it might not. As you can see, looking at a variety of different players. But I'm looking at possibly signing Ibrahim Barr from Manchester United. Now, the reason that I like the look of this guy, really, is he's an absolutely insane striker. Um, but he could also be a really, really good right winger for us. And I feel like the winger area is an area where we don't really use wingers at the moment all that much. And when we do, obviously, we have Paul Smith and Jr. But it's an area that we could invest in and definitely make a little bit more of a priority. And Ibrahim Bar here um, kind of ticks a few boxes. Firstly, he can play out on the right, uh, which is as I said, the, the position that could do with a little bit of strengthening. But additionally, he could be a really, really good striker for us. To be honest, his raw finishing ability isn't that great. And I think he would be best suited to kind of playing out on the wing. But you can see as a winger, very well suited to that role. Only 25 as well. And if we look at his report, you can see consistent, uh, versatile, can you know adapt to living in another country. Could also generate some marketing revenue, which is quite nice. Doesn't it enjoy big matches, which is the big turnoff. The other big turnoff is, of course, the fact that Manchester United um, have agreed a deal with me for £75 million. Now, obviously, we're taking on Manchester United today. I've kind of slipped the bid in there anyway. 
I don't think we're going to follow up on it just because of the amount of money it is more than anything. Obviously, the uh, Lerwal deal is going to be a massive one anyway. Uh, but we have got money to spend. We've got about 60 to 70 million really left over. It's a case of do I want to reinvest it big or just kind of sign a load of youth, which I feel like is something that we have done a lot of. And we've turned certainly a nice little bit of profit doing that, you know, signing a lot of players are cheap than selling them on. But there's not too many areas on the pitch, to be honest, where I feel like a new signing in terms of youth is going to provide us with a play who can re break through into the first team and kind of make an impact. But anyway, enough about that rambling of transfers and stuff. It's April. We've got a long way to go until the summer window. I'm sure I will make up my mind on some plans and such as time goes by. Either way, looking at today's team, a little bit of a change, a few differences. I've dropped Junior for today's game. We're going to drop Gilvan into the box-to-box -box midfielder role. Gerard is the centre attacking mid and bring in Dues at complete forward. Um, I just want to bring on Dues, see what he can do. He's a very good striker, of course. Good goal-scoring prowess. He's had a very good season, really, and I feel like this trio here is a trio that we can definitely make work and hopefully we will see work in today's game of course we're going to Old Trafford not exactly happy memories remembered at this ground worth knowing they are playing free up top including Ibrahim Bar out on the left hand side that's going to be something worth keeping an eye out on um, but no this should be an interesting one obviously both teams play narrower systems uh, I don't really like playing against free striker formations we kind of faced a little bit of that with the national team where it caused us some problems but we'll see how we get on today of course we are 4-2 up after the first leg United's two away goals could prove crucial really I'm looking for us to turn up in a similar manner to how we did in the first half against Manchester United exert our dominance early on if we can show that we've got the quality to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and kind of play off that. But either way, we're on the attack here. Dude, Girard in the middle. Girard's there, and he slots it away. It's an ideal start for us. It's a key away goal. Sebastian Girard with his 34th goal of the season. And with the first real chance of the game, we've tucked it away. And, um, well, Manchester United looking a little bit stunned after that. It's a great way to open the game. The highlight itself was very, very short. Mosca with the ball there to Dews. Dews just holds it up nicely, sucks in two defenders. Girard latches onto it. Tucks it away into the far corner. Beautiful goal. 5-2 up on aggregate. United, they need three goals. And, uh, well, we might be on the attack again here. Big throw to Gilvan. Girard again. Why not score again? It's 2-0. It's two goals in the space of, what, two minutes. Can't ask for more than that. And suddenly, because the away the away go goals work, Manchester United need four if they want to take this to extra time. They'll need a fifth if they want anything more. If we score the next goal... It's game over at that point, I'm pretty certain. Uh, another goal for us would mean that Manchester United need six, which they're going to struggle to get, you'd think. Either way, they're on the attack here. Bar the player we're looking at signing. Can he turn up in a big game? It's a disappointing finish by him. Hits the post at the far post. He, I mean, he did well to cut inside. It wasn't a bad finish. But, uh, well, the woodwork held firm. And he goes for an ambitious long shot. Mosca turns his man. We have so many men forward. This has got to be a goal. Mosca beats his man. Can he slot it away? Of course he can. We are running rampant. It's 3-0. What a goal that was. Mosca beat the man once to turn him. Got caught up fairly quickly, to be fair, but then beat him again, sucked him in. And, uh, well, the keeper came rushing out. It was too little, too late. That is game over. United need six in the remaining 65 minutes of this game. They're not going to get six. They can't do it. I wanted to beat our demons, of course. As I said, we won the first leg 2-1 against Manchester United last year, and we lost the second leg 5-2. We're 3-0 up, and half-time hasn't come yet. We might even be on the attack again. Gerard, a few men ahead of him. He's just going on his own. Why not? It's a nice save in the end. What a goal that could have been, though, for Sebastian Gerard, Just surging on from in deep. And we defended well this game against the three strikers of Manchester United. And we've looked great in the attack. And we might get another chance. Gerard, options. Mosca, bury that. Why not? It's embarrassing. It's 4-0 again before half-time against Manchester United. This time away from home. I mean, what more can you ask for? Girard pulls it back to Mosca. Mosca just slots it in. It's such a good goal. We've had six shots on target. We've scored four. We've been clinical in these last two games. And, uh, well, there's a big smile on my face. And the reason there's a big smile on my face is because Manchester United needs seven in 45 minutes. And, well, I've seen some weird stuff in Football Manager. Seven goals in the second half is not happening, I don't think. And the fact we've got it to that stage where they need seven goals really gives you an idea of how good we've been. An incredible performance by the entire team. United have had way more shots. They've only had two on target. They've had more possession, but we've just hit them on the break. And we've made it count when we have hit them on the break too. 
And, uh, well, it's been a fantastic performance. Two goals for Girard, two for Mosca. You'd think one of them's going to be looking for the hat-trick. We're going to take dudes off. I'm going to bring in Glenn Andre for him. Uh, I'm also going to take off Gilvan, and I'm going to bring in Vincinius uh, for a little bit of time. Give two of the youngsters a bit of experience, really, for the last 15 minutes. Not many football matches you're going to come onto the pitch, um, kind of like this one, where there's just nothing left for you to worry about, really. It's game over by a long margin. United... They've been humbled by us here. 8 2 the score. I mean, they might get consolation. Cabasele gives away a penalty as long as he's not booked. I can deal with that and it isn't going to be a booking, which is always good. United with a chance to get what would be only a consolation. And even then, I feel that Old Trafford is probably empty by now. The fans, they've had enough. Guy gets another goal for his name. A very good striker, actually, Kyle Guy. I believe United signed him this year. But, well, this is not what he came to the club to witness. This is not what he came to do. He did not come to score a penalty against a Gibraltarian side uh, when they're already 8-2 down. And that's going to be all she wrote for this game. What a performance. What a result. One for the history books, certainly. And that does see us go marching on into the semi-finals. And, well, we have to be very happy with the football we've played there. That was absolutely incredible stuff by the entire side. Girard... Man of the match, comfortably, was just so good for us today. What a player he has turned into over the last few years. You know, he's been here now five years. He's always been great for us, but the last few years he's turned into a whole new beast. And with performances like this, he will go down in apex folklore, there is no doubt. Mosca also getting two goals, worth mentioning that. Top two goal scorers in the competition, uh, well, Girard and Mosca. Kyle Guy, who, of course, as I mentioned, got knocked out. He is even on with Girard at the moment. Must be ahead by virtue of the fact he's played fewer games. He's a very good striker, to be fair. It's unfortunate that he plays for a Manchester United side, which, well, just got absolutely annihilated. But anyway, that's going to wrap up this episode from me. Really can't ask for more than that. I was expecting a squeaky bum time episode where I hate everything. As you can see, Bar, not interested in talking to us. Come on. We have a lot to offer, but he's not interested. So that's that. That's the plan scrapped. I wasn't going to go for him, I don't think, anyway. The dream's dead for him, at least in the Champions League bar. After that performance, he just doesn't want to leave. He's emotionally scarred. Anyway, Champions League semi-final coming up. We've, that got, we've got that to look forward to. That's going to be an interesting one. I don't know why it's only shown one leg of it at the moment, because there will be two legs. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys are looking forward to it. As always, if you have enjoyed today's video, please do leave a like. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. Let me know what you thought of the team's performance today. Pretty good one, uh, if you ask me. And yeah, that is going to be all from me. Thank you so much for watching, guys. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.